All right, guys, I'm going to take it over to Genesis chapter 4, 8 through 16. And I want to talk about Cain today. And kind of similar to what Daryl was talking about in Matthew chapter 7, 21 through 23. You know, Cain is one of these guys that, that would call God Lord. He's bringing God offerings. And we all know that his offering was not accepted and God did not accept him or his offering. I'm not sure what kind of offering he was bringing to the Lord, but obviously it was not acceptable to God. And so that's, that's where we pick up in the story. Now we're in verse 8, NLT version. It says, one day Cain suggested to his, to his brother, let's go out in the field. And while they're in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Afterwards, the Lord asked Cain, where is your brother? Where is Abel? You know, I, I pause there. I read a, a verse like this and someone might say, well, why is God asking him? And, and I see grace here. Here's an opportunity for Cain to fess up to his son and say, you know what, Lord, I, 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 I've done something terrible. I, I, I've, done, I've done something horrendous. I can't believe what I did. I was so filled with anger, so filled with, with, with hatred that I messed up. I killed somebody. I killed my brother. You know, like, here's a perfect opportunity. Because God already knows what he did. We're going to find out later on in the next couple of verses. But here's God's grace. You know, fast up to me. But of course, does he? Does he not? The next verse says, look, what he, look how he responds to God. I don't know. Am I, am I my brother's guardian or my brother's keeper? I'm like, are you, are you kidding me? Do you talk to God that way? Like, there's no respect. There's no reverence for God. There's no fear of God. Verse 10, the Lord said, what have you done? Listen to your bro your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are cursed and banished from the ground, which has swallowed your brother's blood. No longer will the ground yield good crops for you. No matter how hard you work, from now on you will be a homeless wanderer on the earth. So God curses him. Again, you're, so I'm comparing Cain now to King David. Nathan comes to David and confronts him with his sin and tells him, you did this and you did that, David. The Lord will punish you for it, right? I'm just paraphrasing. I don't remember the, the exact words. And what does David do? David says, I have sinned against the Lord. And then Nathan says, the Lord has heard you. He's forgiven you. However, these things are going to happen. But God was ready to take his life. Right. Well, look at let's see. Look at Cain's response again. God just finished cursing him. He's got another opportunity to say, you know what, Lord, I, I deserve far more than that. He's got a, a whole. I mean, he's he, he used to bring offerings to God. He knows God. So he's got a perfect opportunity to say, you know what, Lord, I accept my I, I accept my, my punishment. Um. I deserve even more. But look at look at his response. Verse 13. His response is, My punishment is too great for me to bear. You have banished me from the land, and you have banished me from your presence. You have made me a homeless wanderer. Anyone who finds me will kill me. He's saying that his punishment is too great. It sounds like someone who gets caught into sin... And is making an excuse for the punishment. You know, someone breaks the law and and they get sentenced to 10 years in prison and they're crying about how, how 10 years is too much. You know, or someone uh, commits adultery, their wives find out and now they're going to lose a family. And they're like, no, you know, uh, this isn't a repentant heart with Cain. This is worldly sorrow. He's sorry that he got caught. He's sorry that he's going to suffer this consequence. His type of sorrow is not leading him to repentance as the Apostle Paul taught to the 2 Corinthians chapter 7. He taught the Corinthians about worldly sorrow versus godly sorrow. And we see, we, we see worldly sorrow here from Cain. King David, on the other hand, he writes Psalms 51. Against you, O Lord, and only you have I sinned. And we see this godly sorrow that led to David's repentance. And we never read about him committing adultery again. But with Cain... You see no repentance at all. 
And so I just, you know, I read that to my family just after we had dinner. And I just thought that was a fine example of two different men. You see, we see a man of God, King David, who, who does mess up and asks the Lord for forgiveness. And God is so gracious. There's still consequences, but the Lord forgives his sin. And Cain, on the other hand, just refuses to repent. Does not even ask God for forgiveness at all. He's not even, you know, he doesn't even say sorry. Um, instead, he, he says that his punishment is too great for him. It's too much. So we see the difference here of worldly sorrow versus godly sorrow. That's a great comparison. Just mm -hmm. a, a great comparison of, of the two. And I know um, there, there's this, we've seen this thing online. I don't know if it, I don't know if it's on, a, it's probably on a t-shirt or, or something, but it, it'll, it says something to the effect that, you know, um, Moses was a, was a murderer. David was an adulterer. Um, and then uh, it'll say, you know, things about the apostles, how they were in their flesh. I really think there should be one that says Cain, Cain was a murderer. Um, um, and then, you know, Cora, Dathan and Abiram, you know, worshiped idols and come up with this list. And then at the end of it, I don't know what we would put. I'm not, I'm not trying to be irreverent, but maybe they probably went to hell instead. So instead of, instead of looking at the fleshly things of these saints like David and like Moses, um, people, people look at the things that they, um, we, we should be looking at what they did right, right? Their repentance, right? And when they when they sought the Lord uh, for forgiveness, mm -hmm. um, and this is yeah, this is this is a a great reminder of that. And it's interesting because when you were reading this in verse um, in verse nine, I never I never thought of it as when the Lord said, "Where is Abel, your brother?" I never thought of that as grace. Like, hey, he's that's actually an opportunity, right? For him to say, Hey, this is what I've done. You know, you know, my soul, you know, my soul is downcast saying something that David would have said, right. Instead of, um, but instead he doubles down and says, you know, I do not know when he did. And then, and then in a, just a, a very disrespectful way, mm -hmm. almost hostile. Am I my brother's keeper? Could you imagine being, I mean, being sarcastic with God. So you right. can see that. Yeah. But. Mm. But yeah, we should be, we should be looking at these, um, at, at the saints for the mm -hmm. good things that they did, not the fleshy things they did. And mm -hmm. just almost saying, oh, well, we can identify with them because they did this. And it's like, well, but we don't want to identify with them for that reason. Right. It should be, it should be because they, they were, you know, saints. Mm -hmm. So great way to look at that. Never thought of it that way. Yes. Praise the Lord, brother. One is that Cain, his worship raw manner mm -hmm. and raw attitudes because of God rejected his worshiping. We see John chapter 4, verse 24. God is spirit. Those who worship in him must worship in spirit and truth. Amen. Yes. So it was seen in the scripture that at David and at Moses and the, the other person, they keep right attitudes in right manner in worshiping God. All right. In spirit, from from the inner man, from the heart. Yes. The in heart. truth, the way the way that God says. Yes. yes. And that's what that's what Abel did, right? So he yes. he loved God from the heart, worshipped yes. worshipped him from the heart brought to him the best of his flock yes and then like ponty was saying we don't know what it was that cain brought but it wasn't it wasn't what god wanted and it it surely wasn't the best right so 